very excited to introduce today's guest, J. Kenji Lopez Alt. Kenji, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Talks at Google. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't grow up learning how to cook, like from my grandparents or from my mother or whatever. So by the time I was in college, like I wasn't, I didn't really cook much. Um, and in fact, my main cooking influence at that time was my my dad, um, who is uh, from Western Pennsylvania. He's, um, you know, his his family goes back a few generations in the U.S. Um, and he's from Western Pennsylvania. Uh, but he was super into um, Chinese food growing up. And so he would um, take us around like Chinatown every weekend in New York and in Boston. Um, and then um, uh, and then on weekends, you know, every, every couple times a month, he would cook like these big Chinese um, feasts. And so most and, and that was when I was involved <laughs> in cooking because on, on weekdays, I was like, you know, practicing violin and doing all these things that Asian kids do. And my, so my mom would cook dinner. So I never cooked dinner. I never cooked with my mom. But on weekends um, was when my dad would cook um, and he would have us help him. So whatever, picking cilantro leaves, things like that. Um, uh, and so most of my cooking experience growing up was um, cooking like Chinese or Mexican food from like and learning how to do it from my dad, who was white and uh, yeah. was learning it, learning it um, in turn from like books and also from, you know, he spent a lot of time meeting chefs and talking to cooks at, at, at various restaurants around um you know it, i feel like it's 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 a pretty it, it's similar to food lab in in that it's you know techniques oriented um and that um i try to be relatively broad as far as like this the different types of dishes you can do um and to really show you like all right if you learn this one technique here are all the different things you can do with it so it's similar to the food lab in that sense but um it's it's i think it's a fundamentally different book in that um in the food lab, um, a lot of the recipes in there, um, you know, some some of them are practical, but a lot of them are sort of there really to illustrate um, as many different principles of cooking as possible. You know, so there's like a recipe for meatloaf in there um, that that takes like two days to make, and you grind your own meat and you do all these different things, um, and you know, it has like forty ingredients, and and you know that recipe, uh, I've never made it since I made that, since I wrote the book. <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> and the, you know, the idea behind it is like, all right, like I'm going to show you everything like here, I'm going to give you sort of a map of how to make meatloaf. Right. And, and this is everything that you can possibly see in, the, in this map. It's like an atlas with everything. Um, and now, um, you know, once you, once you have that map, now you can choose like what route you want to take. So you can decide, do I want to grind my own meat next time? Do I want to make this, mm -hmm. um, this stock reduction to in, increase flavor, whatever. All So there's all these things that are sort of optional techniques that are really there just to sort of illustrate um, some of the basic principles of cooking. Um, whereas, uh, you know, in the walk, there's not, it, it, I don't do that as much because the, the walk is much more about like, all right, like here's this tool that I've used for, you know, I, I've used literally the exact same walk for like 20 something years, right? Mm -hmm. like I, I bought it when I was in college um, and I've used that exact same walk um, to like feed myself through college to feed when I was single, when I was living with roommates, when I got married and now like with my family. Right. And so it's this one tool that is extraordinarily useful and has all these different things you can do with it. Um, and so the, this book is much more about sort of highlighting that practicality. Um, and mm -hmm. so the recipes in this book, I, you know, I do expect that people will probably make them uh, verbatim, you know, or maybe, maybe, you know, wing it a little bit, but there, there's no there's no equivalent of like a four day a four a four right. day long chili in this book um, <laughs> Got it. um because because the recipes in this book like all, all the techniques and stuff in this book are things that like i literally do multiple times a week you know these days it's like if i want to learn how to cook a specific sichuan dish i can like go on youtube and right. find you know find people making it at home people making it in restaurants probably i could find like people making it live right now right um, and so I, you have all this access to all these resources that you never had before. Um, so getting, you know, so the process of writing a, a book now or writing a recipe now is really different than it was when I started writing recipes. Um, uh, because now like getting idea, you, you know, the, the testing process and saying, all right, what does work? What doesn't mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do this AB testing, see what difference it makes. Like that process is still the same, you know, and I still do a lot of that. But um, as far as access to ideas um as, and and expert opinions on on techniques um that that is sort of vastly increased but um so yeah the idea of washing meat um uh is someone 
you know, someone who grew, who, who my, you know, my, my cooking experience, my um, restaurant experience is all in, um, you know, mainly Western, you know, Western technique, a little bit of, a little, a, a little bit of, you know, Japanese, a little bit of other types of Asian, but definitely no, like I didn't have any restaurant experience cooking Chinese food or, um, um, which is where a lot of this, this sort of washing comes into place. And so, you know, I was always under the, the impression that like, okay, you like, I've seen, I've seen people say, wash your meat. I, you know, that seems maybe people used to do that because meat was, you know, because right. we didn't have as good refrigeration then as we do now or whatever. Maybe, you know, it seems one of those things that's just like a, a vestige of an older, um, of older times. But, um, but then when I saw, you know, I saw, oh, modern chefs are still doing this. Okay. Like maybe I There's should. There's gotta be a reason. Yeah. Be. yeah. And so I, um, yeah. And so I tested and I tested various types of washing. I tested um, why it, it, it did, this didn't make it into the book, but there's an article that just went up on Serious Eats about um, uh, dim sum style um, spare rib, the steamed ribs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's um, there's restaurants that will that wash those in these sort of giant machines that look like um, like uh, clothes dryers, like clothes. <laughs> Um, uh, and in fact, there are some places that will repurpose washing machines for clothes to wash them in. Um, and so, you know, and so I tested that, like I, I tested washing in a, in a countertop clothes, dry, a clothes washer. Um, I tested washing like by hand. And so all these different things that, um, you test and you find out, oh, okay. So like washing is, is not it, it, part of it. It's like, okay. Like you, you, you get all the, um, the myoglobin and the minerals and stuff out of the meat that, that can cause it to sort of discolor as you're. Um, as you're stir frying it, or particularly for something like steamed ribs, where like you, where that that really um, sort of pale, clean color is mm -hmm. um, prized. Like part of it is that, but it also makes like a huge difference as far as um, ability to absorb marinades go, um, and also uh, texture, tenderness. So um, you know that that sort of almost that that sort of really tender, almost slippery texture that you get with like if you've had like uh, like like beef chow fun from the takeout place right where, mm -hmm. where it's like how do they get how do they get this meat so tender and so yeah. like you know like has melting. like a soft quality yeah exactly it. um yeah. and that comes down to you know that comes down to well it's a couple techniques but a lot of it is down to um for, you know from from the testing i did it's like 90 percent of that is is very vigorously washing it i mean like putting so it in water and like squeezing and squeezing and squeezing like you're like you're wringing out clothes um uh, and then, and then another part of that is sort of the, a, a, an alkaline marinade, um, which is which you know the alkaline marinade was what I had been reading is is the thing that really tenderizes it. But in the testing that I did, it actually it's actually the washing that has a much bigger effect than the alkaline marinade does. Um, and then and then some of it is pre-treating it. So like in a in a restaurant, you would um, pass it through oil first. So you'd have oil in your wok, or you might have a deep fryer, and you would very briefly like fry the meat. Uh, mm -hmm. before you stir fry it um i don't i don't generally do that at home but um but yeah those are all right now you know i feel like i'm in this very lucky position that um uh you know my books are continuing to sell well uh and so and, and i don't you know other than my sort of new york times gig which i do once a month um i don't I, you know i don't have a boss which is great <laughs> which yeah. is something i've always <laughs> wanted in a career like every career move i've ever made was like to have fewer people to answer to um and so um, I don't know what I'm going to do next. You know, I, I'm, I'm obviously, I want to take some time off. Um, my son now is seven months old, so I want to spend a lot more time, uh, with, um, with the kids again. Um, and, uh, um, you know, eventually I, I, I at some point I do want to, I think my next projects are going to be writing, um, a couple more children's books, uh, because I want to finish those before my kids are not children anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, and then, uh, I do also long-term want to work on a, a book about cooking with um, cooking with kids. So not not like a kids cookbook, um, but a cookbook for parents who want to get their kids more involved in cooking and how to sort of teach your kids to um, help in the kitchen. My restaurant, um, which I which I'm you know I, I left when I moved to Seattle, but my restaurant um, that you know that was a strong policy in the beginning and um, and continues to be now um, was that um, yeah we had these and we had our basic rules were. Um, no, no cursing in the kitchen, no, um, uh, no yelling and no, uh, like public dressing down, like, so which, mm -hmm. which happens a lot. So, um, um, th those are the sort of basic rules of conduct in the kitchen, which I think a lot of kitchens should follow. But, um, 
I, I wouldn't necessarily say that makes me good, but I, you know, I think I, I, <laughs> I did my best to set up a workplace that um, felt uh, encouraging and felt um, that that people felt comfortable in. And, and particularly, um, you know, I wanted a workplace where um, uh, women and minorities who, you know, very often have the short end of the stick in, in, as far as, you know, more traditional, like the type of restaurant culture I grew up in, which is this very sort of extremely macho, yeah. abusive type thing. Um, but, but particularly an environment where, um, you know, w women and minorities would feel um, comfortable working. Uh, um, so, you know, that it, it, in, in, as, in, in as much as that goes, I think I was a good boss. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that I'm the best boss as far as, you know, like I'm, I, I don't <laughs> think I'm a very good manager. Like I, I, I tend to, I tend to, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a reason I try and actually, <laughs> like, we don't need to go through. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, practicing walk tossing, it's, it's, it's just, it's just like practicing <laughs> anything. You just kind of got to do it. Um, in the book, I recommend um, practicing with, with uh, like dry beans, you know, get some, put some dry beans in there. Um, and then you can um, just practice the motion. Um, that said, like, if, if you feel like you're not going to get to the, you, you don't care about getting to the point where you can toss extremely well. Um, you can definitely like use your spatula to, um, you know, what you, what, what you don't want to do is stir. Like, so stir fries are called stir fries, but they shouldn't really be, they should be called sort of toss fries or, or <laughs> fold fries because you're not, you shouldn't, you should never be stirring like this. You know, you could be, you could put the, pa the, the spatula pointing down and kind of um, as you're, as you're tossing, use it to help mo move stuff in the air. But if you do, if you don't even want to do that, like you can, you can take the sort of shovel side of the spatula and get underneath, you know, very, put it, put it underneath your food and then lift it and flip it over and do and do it like that, like where you lift and flip. Um, and that, and that you can get a reasonably good approximation of stir frying. Um, you know, the goal of stir frying is to get food moving through the air so that you're encouraging evaporation. So you're, you're, you're get, getting everything to sort of tumble over itself so that everything cooks evenly, you know, cause everything's cut into sort of bite-sized pieces already and you want everything to cook quickly and evenly. But part of that quick process, part, part of what makes it quicker is the fact that um, you're able to get moisture to evaporate so easily and so quickly in a walk. And that's like one of the advantages of, of being able to toss in a walk um, that the more you move things through the air and the more convection you have going on, the more moisture um, you're, the more you're encouraging moisture to evaporate away. And so the faster um, you're going to concentrate flavors. Um, and so, the, you know, so that's really your goal. You should, you want, whether you're tossing with your hand or whether you're using your spatula to sort of lift and, and toss and, and tumble the food, um, you want the food to be in the air um, a lot. Um, one of the things we do um, with my daughter is that um, we stress that like, it's okay to not like things. And it's also more importantly, like it's okay to like people change over time, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, if today you don't, if you don't, if you, if you don't like peas today, you like try it. Maybe you don't like peas today. That's fine. Um, and you don't have to eat peas today. Like we, we make sure that she has, um, you know, we, we think about her sort of nutrition on a, uh, on like sort of like a week long schedule as, a, as opposed <laughs> to like my mom was very much like a, here's your, here's your plate. You finish everything that's on it. You need to eat these things, these specific things. Um, uh, and you can't leave the table till you're done with that. Um, whereas, um, for us, it's like, if she wants to only eat a, um, only eat like lettuce today or only eat salmon tomorrow or whatever, like as long as over the course of a week, she's getting like a wide variety of foods. Um, that's okay. So we, we generally like present uh, at mealtimes, we present a bunch of things. She can pick what she wants to eat. Um, uh, and then if she, you know, then we just sort of keep a loose eye on, on what she's eating over the course of, of time. Um, but then as far as like foods that are, uh, that she doesn't like, um, you know, what we tell her to say, instead of saying like, I don't like this, we, we teach her to say like, Hey, like, I don't like this today, but I might like it, but I might like it next week. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that way she keeps an open mind to it and, and she, and, and it reminds her like, Oh, next week I might be a different person. And like, I might actually like this thing if I try it again. Years ago, actually, when I was at, still at Cooks Illustrated, so this must have been like 2005 or six, um, I did um, uh, a series of tests there where we essentially cooked the same recipes in a wok side by side with a, um, a stainless steel skillet and a, and a cast iron skillet. Um, and um, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the, the, the flavor that you get out of a wok is fundamentally different. Um, and I think it, it comes down to um, that rapid, you know, that encourage the ability to toss and the encouraging of of really rapid um, evaporation and getting sort of more concentrated flavors and drier flavors and less sort of steaming. Um, so 
Well, while you can, um, a lot of dishes you can successfully do in a skillet. Um, and if you're not, you know, if you're not tasting it side by side, you're probably also going to be fine with the results. Um, that said, like, if you have the space for a walk and you want and you're so inclined to get one, um, you will um, almost definitely notice uh, an improvement in flavor if you switch over to using a walk, um, uh, mainly just because you're going to be able to, um, yeah, concentrate that flavor better, get 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 a dry heat better than you can uh, in a skillet. The the tools I used by far the most when I lived in a small New York apartment were a wok um, mm -hmm. and a Dutch oven, um, and then probably one uh, like three quart saucier, you know, like a three quart round bottom. Um, Pan, those are the pans I, I used most. And then those are the pans I actually still use probably most now. Um, but, um, you know, a, a wok is, is, for me, it's like a wok is an easy choice. Um, and of course, it depends on what kind of cuisine you like, right? It's like if you cook a lot of like, you know, French braises, then get a Dutch oven, don't get a wok. But, um, but, it, but if you want like a tool that's going to give you a, a practical approach to cooking a huge variety of dishes, right? It's like the book, you know, this book is... Um, however many hundred pages, like 600 something pages long. Um, and there's only, out of every recipe in that book, there, um, there's only one that, I, th I think there's only one that calls for even like heating the oven. Everything else, literally mm -hmm. one wok or maybe one wok plus a side pan, but like a one wok, one pan on the stovetop. Um, and and as far as like the other tools go, it's like you a wok spatula, a ladle, a lid, and a bamboo steamer. Um, and that's like, that's basically it. Those are those with, with those few tools and a bunch of, and a bunch of cheap metal bowls, right? Like mixing bowls and stuff. Right. But with those few tools, like you can cook virtually everything that's in this book.